Hello friends and welcome to tutorial number 5. In the last tutorial number 4, we talked about the radio button button mode as you can see here. So today we're going to be talking about the toggle button button mode. So we're going to change from radio button and we're going to change to toggle button. Before we proceed, let's see how the radio button mode works so that we can understand the toggle button mode. So the radio button mode allows you to select only one button in a group of radio buttons as you can see right there. So let's change the button mode of all the buttons in our group to toggle button and let's run our project and see what happens. Now we can select multiple buttons at the same time and we can deselect a button and select a button within the group of buttons. So this is the difference between the radio button mode and the toggle button mode. You can select multiple buttons in the toggle button while selecting only a single button in the radio button. So where can this be used in a real world application? Let's suppose you want to create an application where you need the user to toggle on and toggle off something, be it a mechanical controller or anything that controls any hardware and you want it to be toggled on and toggled off, you can use the toggle button. It doesn't matter if you have a group of buttons, you can set them to toggle button or if you have a single button still, that button can work as a toggle button. Let's try this. Let's save and run our project to see if this can work. So I'm going to toggle the button on and toggle off. Yes, it's working. And when the button is toggled on, as you can see, when the cursor rests on the button, there are no hover effects because the button is already toggled on or is already selected or checked. But when it is off, because the cursor is on to the control, there are hover effects for as long as the cursor hovers in and hovers out of the button. But when selected, the effects disappear because the button is already selected. So this is the difference between the toggle button and the radio button. When we revert back to default button, it becomes a regular button, just like the common buttons that we see in the toolbox provided by Microsoft as default buttons. You can see the checked state is not applied when we click because the button mode is set to default button, which is a default silicon button with material style applied. So these are the differences we see from the group of button types that we have in our control right there. I would like to show you another feature that we have. We have the auto size feature right here, which is set to false. But what happens when we set it to true? Let's see. The button size is automatically changed the button will style itself according to the content that is within the button. This includes the text and any related images that may be in the button. But when this is set to false, we can feel free to do what we want with the button control. But when it is set to true, we cannot change the button size because the auto size feature is set to true. The control will generate the button size and apply that button size as a read only property, which means we cannot change the button size. It is changed by the control itself. But when the auto size is set to false, we can feel free to play around with the button and style it according to our theme. I would like to show you another feature that we have. It is the dialogue result feature. 
When the button is clicked, you can set the dialog result according to your needs. You can set it to dialog result OK, cancel, abort, retry, ignore, yes, no, or none. So these are the uh, examples that we that we have there. So let's try something here. Let's go to let's double click on our button and let's try, try something here. It is the Citicon button dialog result and let's cast the result or convert the result to a string and let us run our project and see what happens. We'll give it a time to build and run the project. When we click, the result is set to none. But let's change the property of the dialog result in our properties tab and see what happens. So the dialog result at the moment is set to none. Let's change it to OK and run the project and see what happens. When we click on the button, the dialog result is set to OK. So we can play around with this dialog result options and we can customize them according to our needs. We can create a cancel button. We can create a yes or no button. We can even create an OK button and we can capture this dialog result property and we can do some specific actions according to the desired dialogue result that we would have captured. So this is a very useful feature that we have right there. I'd like to show you again another feature that is very interesting. We have the trans text transform feature. As you can see, I'm going to change the font style to 11PT so that we can see better and I'm going to change the text to click me. Right, so what happens when we configure the text transform feature? As you can see, this option by default is set to none, which means the first letter in a sentence is going to be an uppercase and the second letter as we continue the text of the sentence is going to be an uppercase but if we set it to uppercase all the letters within the text will be set to uppercase but if we change to lowercase all the text within the control will be set to lowercase when we revert back to none it reverts back to default. So this is very useful if you want to change the text style of the control. You may do this not in writing code, but you can just configure this property. It is very, very easy. So these are some of the features that we have in the Citicon button control. And I thank you, friends, for joining me in this video. In our next video, we are going to explore further properties that we find there within the button control. Once again, my name is Russell Chidakwa and I'm a software developer working with the Citicon Framework Development Team. Thank you for joining me. Cheers.